welcome to Social Media Help Desk. This is the time every week where we come to you to talk to you about what's going on in the news of social media and tips and tricks that you can take in your own business to do some marketing. Uh, my name is Alexandra and I am joined here with Lila and Olivia. Um, and so we're gonna start as usual with the things that are happening in social media today. Um, so we're gonna start here with something I think we all kind of know already is that teenagers are very into YouTube. Um, but now we have some really impressive statistics about it. For example, the ages of eight to 12 spend about five hours a day wow. on their smartphone or computer. Five hours, which I mean, we work in social media, so we see that a lot, but mm -hmm. that seems like a lot, right? That's like the whole day. That's like the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, 13 to 18, seven hours. Ooh, it goes yeah. up, it goes up, <laughs> yep. I mean, we're starting, I have friends with babies now, and so I see them with their uh, iPads. iPads, and they're like, I have so many friends who are like, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to let my kid look at screens, and then you're just like, here, they figure it out so quickly. They mm -hmm. see mom, dad playing on a phone, and they're like, I know what that is. I can play with that. They learn. It's so innate. Frightening. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we're starting them early. Um, another statistic for you. They've also found um, that 53% 50 of tweens... Uh, are using most of their screen time to watch videos on YouTube. So if that is your market, YouTube is where you want to be is what I'm saying. Um, I mean, I spend time on YouTube myself, but 53% if they're spending most of their screen time doing that, that's a lot of social media intake that they're getting. So now we know, I mean, we already kind of knew, but now there's numbers to go with it. Um, and so next is we're gonna talk about Instagram. They're actually doing something um, kind of cool and I can't believe that it took them this long. Um, but they have been taking small steps to improve safety for the users. Um, not too long ago, they stopped allowing ads for um, like diet drinks, diet drinks, things that are like those flat tummy tea kind of things to be marketed to underage people because they were like, this is damaging. Mm -hmm. And now they're taking it even further. Um, this is a quote from their announcement. We will no longer allow fictional depictions of self-harm or suicide on Instagram, such as drawings or memes or content from films or comics that use graphic imagery. They even go so far as to say they're going to remove imagery that may not show self-harm or suicide, but does include associated materials or methods. So it's kind of shocking to me that that wasn't addressed earlier than this, but I'm glad they did it. Yeah, I think that's very important because we mindlessly scroll a lot on these devices, on these platforms. So, you know, we're subliminally being hit by all of this messaging. So if we are scrolling past accounts that feature that sort of imagery, even though we may not intentionally be consciously absorbing that, we may scroll past it quickly. It's still something that's being imprinted in our subconscious and we are not realizing it and we are internalizing that messaging. And we don't know to especially more impressionable um, age groups that are now emerging on these platforms or really big growing up on these platforms, what sort of impact that can have. So I think this is a great step that the platform is really taking. I agree. I think that's good. And they do have a younger demographic like YouTube does as well. Mm -hmm. And you have to, as an uploader, be mindful of the fact that not everyone is suicidal. And so if you're going to be posting about that, like it's, um, you know, posting even a statistic about it, like I understand why they would even limit graphics because mm -hmm these age groups are so like you said they're impressionable if you tell them something is a certain way they're going to believe you and it's good that they're just eradicating it all together whether it's both uh for the positive and for the negative they're just putting a, a stamp on it and yeah saying, no nope, more not doing it yeah i read an interesting article over the weekend actually and i think this ties into it and this is a hopeful thing and this is why i'm bringing it up there's a lot of talk about um are teens using so much social media that it's causing a lot of depression and anxiety? This is like a statistic that goes around all the time. A recent study happened and they found that that's not as true as we thought it was. Apparently, kids who are on social media may have a risk of it, but they actually do better if they are interacting with social media, like commenting and liking and being a part of it as being a social. Being <laughs> social, it's actually something that's not bad. Now the people who are just like passively scrolling, they might suffer from some of it, but it's apparently a little bit better than we thought, which made me really happy when I read that because I was like, I really hope this research continues to hold true. Um, mm -hmm. So very cool. Uh, switching gears a little bit. Uh, let's move into <laughs> the more professional <laughs> side of, of social media. Let's talk about LinkedIn. So they have 
implemented some updates that's supposed to be really, really helpful for uh, the way that you as a business can interact and get your employees to interact on LinkedIn. Uh, so here's a few things that they've done. Employee notifications. Uh, this is admins of a company page can alert employees when they created important posts, which is great. This is something that we like to do ourselves where if something cool goes out, something important goes out, we will say, okay, everybody go share it. Go share it on yours, get it out, get the word out to people that are in your network. Um, and so this is really cool because it makes it easy. It's just like, hey, a notification happened. You mm -hmm. don't have to send an additional email. You don't have to stand up in a meeting and tell everybody to do it. It's like, hey, your LinkedIn is telling you. Um, secondary, uh, kudos and team moments. So this I think is cool. We talk about culture a lot here. And so this is one that's gonna be a feature. It allows admins to highlight important moments within the company. Um, such as new team member spotlights. We do that on Facebook already. We do that also on LinkedIn, I think. Yeah, we post that kind of thing all over the place. So we talk about our people here. Um, work achievements, employee milestones, and much more. Um, this I love because I think LinkedIn as a recruiting platform, that shows you if you go to somebody's page, like, hey, we're highlighting our team members. See, we have culture, we mean it. <laughs> I think it's cool. Good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then last but not least is competition meter. So this is uh, similar to personal account meters. It helps a company's page fully utilize all of LinkedIn's available features. Um, and so this is what they stated about it. Complete LinkedIn pages generate 30% more page views per week compared to an incomplete LinkedIn page. This is something that we like to do is we sometimes people come to us and they're like, we need you, we need help refreshing our LinkedIn. And it's really about hitting those things of going, okay, it has to have all of this in it. So mm -hmm. cool, they're helping make that happen. I don't know, I like the way LinkedIn is rolling out stuff. I think they're doing a really good job yeah. of slowly, like, and they're thoughtful releases. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, except for when they added like the, um, the other options for liking something. That was like, <laughs> I think you're just doing it because everybody else did it. They also on mobile, which I thought was interesting. They also let you put stickers on posts, which I think is very interesting as well. Stickers? Yeah, like, you know, like a little smiley face. Oh, yeah, 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 the new, or, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm well, talking about. They rolled those out. Yeah, yeah so. Hmm. For the employee notifications, just mm -hmm. a, a way that I've been using it already with oh. my clients, um, I've actually noticed a really big uptick in their culture because mm -hmm. nice. we, as the agency, we, we manage their company page and we also actually are um, managing the CEO's page. And so I've been taking full advantage of these different tools and you're seeing that within their company, the, the LinkedIn conversation and the buzz around mm. giving each other kudos now and having each other um, be in the know when the company is releasing certain things on their company page, the fact that they all get notified, they're, yeah. they're loving it. Mm, they're spending awesome. twice as much time, I would say, than six months ago. So yeah. it's, it's really cool to see how it can make a big difference with just a tab of a button. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's awareness. If it's not top of mind, you're not going to think about it. You're just going to be like, I don't know, fine, whatever, I yeah. guess. You know, it's every once in a while. And I'm not someone who's on LinkedIn all the time. And so there has been like stints where I wouldn't be on there for a couple of weeks and go and catch up and be like, oh, I missed so much. <laughs> I should have been on here sooner. I'm trying to do a better job of, mm -hmm. of being on there and, you know, being active. And I think these are all really good ways to, you know, make everybody active yeah. on LinkedIn. Work towards your, your team. Yeah, exactly. Build relationships with your team members too. Like, yeah. Be a good leader. And give shout outs to your, to your co-workers. Yeah. yeah, I think a great point to note about that is that a lot of people are usually on LinkedIn when they're looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may have a t have team members that have LinkedIn profiles, but because they're not actively looking for a job, they're not really engaging with the LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. or their LinkedIn profile or the company's profile. So this is a great way to keep your employees engaged even past that kind of job hunt phase of their mm -hmm. LinkedIn kind of um, activity. So this is a nice way to get them back on the platform in a way that's got a different purpose. Yeah. yeah, and I noticed it recently too when I um, was promoted and I put it out there, all of a sudden everyone comes out of the woodworks from our company, from the Atlanta office, and it's just everyone's like starting to get excited with me and mm -hmm. that like rejuvenates your energy that you have for your own job mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. And it really, I just, I keep coming back to this, it really just shows anybody who's if somebody's looking to hire you as whatever your business does and they're looking at and they find your LinkedIn and then they see, oh, they have a lot of posts and culture and engagement mm -hmm. and it's with their own people. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to work with that company. Mm -hmm. Or if you know you are hiring for a position mm -hmm. and they come and look at your LinkedIn, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, this must be good. Everybody's interacting and having fun. So 
I think that adds an authenticity and uh, a credibility to your profile and usefulness of LinkedIn. You make a very good point. A lot of people don't go until they're looking for a job. So um, good job, LinkedIn, is what we're saying. I'm sure they need to hear that from us. <laughs> so what we're oh, going to do? They're waiting on social media help desk. I know they were. <laughs> they're sitting here waiting. When are they going to tell us? When are they going to talk about us? Um, so our next thing we're going to talk about is uh, social media banner designs, which ties from LinkedIn. You should have one of those too. Uh, Lila's going to go ahead and talk to us about that. Yeah. So um, banners, they have a couple of different names. Some people refer to them as cover photos, cover art. Really what it is is that you have your Facebook page or your LinkedIn page and you have your logo and then right above that is this big bold image mm -hmm. that you can really put whatever you want there. Um, and so a lot of people who first launch their company pages, they get a little bit of tripped up with what do I post? And so really the intent of this conversation is to spark some creativity. Maybe yeah. we can even brainstorm a couple of cover photos as we do this. Um, but there is a couple of ground rules with banner photos as you do start to decide what to put out there. Um, so the whole purpose of the cover photo is to give the, uh, a new emotion to people who first arrive on your page. It is really mostly for new visitors when they come to your actual company page. Um, so you want to make sure that your branding is very consistent and that when someone gets there, they know that they have found your company. And so whether it's uh, your banner photo on Twitter or on LinkedIn or on Facebook, just try to keep something consistent across all the channels. And then if you do swap them out to always have a different element that um, is recognizable. So here at KW7, we have the chevron, mm -hmm. you know, the, the little, mm -hmm. you the know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The zigzag. Um, and so that's something we keep consistent with um, all of our banners. Um, and then every now and then we'll swap them out for different promotions that we're offering, um, which is a very good use of your banner mm -hmm. is to highlight whatever um, big promotion you're giving out to people. Um, but really it becomes the beacon of your channel. So um, it needs to be a strategic thing that promotes something that you want people to know about when they first get introduced to your company. And you wanna make sure that you immediately give them something that they should know about you, mm -hmm. they should think about you, or something that they should do. And yeah. so th that's really my rule of thumb here. Um, do you it, have any? Yeah, I was gonna say, it just reminds me, it's very similar, I'm always thinking about web, because that's what I do. Um, it just reminds me of what your hero image is. The first thing that someone sees when they land on your website is what is that big image that's at the top and what does it say? Yeah. That should be the first thing that gives you this like instinctive impression. Yeah. Your social media banners should do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good point. That's, you know, that can actually be a pretty good translation to if you're thinking about what should my cover mm -hmm. photo say to go to your website and see what is the first thing that people see when they come to your website. It's likely what they should also know yep. about you when they come to your social. So good point. <laughs> um, so we're gonna cover four design tips. Um, the first one I did already uh, speak about, which is having a very consistent brand theme. Make sure that um, if people find you on LinkedIn that they know they've arrived to the same place mm -hmm. um, because it maybe says your logo or it has your tagline or it very clearly represents something that people would know about your brand. Um, the second is uh, getting the dimensions right. So. Mm -hmm. Speaking of LinkedIn, <laughs> LinkedIn probably has the most difficult to work with cover art because it is very long and very narrow. And so you really um, have a very small section to, uh, to write or to post a photo. So mm -hmm. it's often um, a little bit more difficult on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, but the key is that you know what to expect and that the design that you're gonna create can sort of mold itself to the larger Facebook one, the very narrow LinkedIn one. Mm -hmm. Um, so the best way to do this, if you don't know what the dimensions are, are to actually just type in uh, social media banner LinkedIn, social media banner Facebook, and then their um, manual should show up. And mm -hmm. so that way you get the most accurate, up-to-date information. Um, you could always send us an email if you need our help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's probably the, the best way to ensure you're meeting the standards of today. And mobile is different than desktop on all of these. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, actually my third point. Oh, there you go. Look, I, I'm so jumping ahead. Sorry. You are on top of it. <laughs> this whole thing. Do you want to run it? <laughs> not, I am running it. I'm supposed to be letting you talk is the problem. <laughs> well, tell yes. me about Mama So Lila. she is totally 
totally right. Mobile is the third tip. Um, that is the fact that the dimensions do slightly change. And so if you um, create your desktop banner, it is nice and large. And so if you have wording on there, it's gonna be really easy to read. As soon as you shrink that down and you look at your LinkedIn page on a mobile device, all of a sudden that text becomes teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind when you are creating your design to not go too overboard with the complexity of your banner. Um, and to always check on how these um, banners are going to look when you switch from, from desktop to mobile um, because some of the platforms will also actually um, put your logo on top of yeah. part of your cover image. And then what I have seen happen for some, uh, some people in the past is then the most important part, the key thing that they wanted people to read, gets covered by your yeah. uh, profile photo. So just keep that in mind. You can find a lot of resources online that show you, like, it'll give you the full one and then it'll say, okay, this is what mobile is like and this is your safe zone. Like, mm -hmm. they call it a safe zone. Like, nothing is going to touch here. That's good. So, yeah, that's good. So, you're going to find them. Um, and then the fourth point is uh, to devote as much possible space to the imagery. And so, this doesn't have to be an image of your team. This can just be uh, something more abstract, like here at KWSM, a really big part of our brand is that we love donuts. Mm -hmm. And so our cover art has a little bit of donuts, some, some thank you cards. And so it's, there are little images and creatives that don't necessarily have words on them. So then that way it doesn't matter too much if you're looking at massive donuts or you're looking at a very shrunken down size of donuts. So try mm -hmm. to keep in mind that the majority of the cover art should be an image. Yeah, um, it's because really uh, research shows it that images grab attention mm -hmm. and who doesn't love donuts and would stop and read what a donut has to say. Um, <laughs> so just keep in mind when you are creating your cover art, um, which is I believe what you're going to touch on a little bit more um, to really have an image that tells a story and uh, evokes emotions. Good segue. You want my job? <laughs> <laughs> So tell me about pictures being so important and how to make them pop. Yeah, so thank you for that great segue, Lila, <laughs> because this is perfect. What I'm going to talk about today is the importance of photos and the images that you use. Um, we all know the popular saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, and that rings true today as it has always rung true throughout history. When you see an image, you can say something with words, but an image really does bring so much more meaning, so much more context, and so much more emotion to the topic that you're discussing. And it makes things memorable. So I think when we are talking about marketing and connecting with our audience, one of the big things you wanna do is be top of mind at all times. And creating imagery and using imagery in our marketing images, in our marketing materials that really um, evokes emotion and resonates with our audience is one way that we can remain memorable and at top of mind. And there are many ways to do this and there are many reasons why this works. For example, if you see a photo and there is a human in the photo and you see happiness in their eyes, we, empath we empathize as humans mm -hmm. with that emotion mm -hmm. and we can think of th times in our lives and experiences in our lives that really made us happy. So that really kind of taps into the human emotion element of that. Um, another way is that if we were to see an image of um, fall leaves in Massachusetts, like all the autumn colors, and we see somebody walking through those leaves, that can really evoke the message of fall, autumnal senses and mm -hmm. seasonal things, um, the sound of the leaves crunching, the Christmas, the crispness, pardon me, of the air during that time of the year. Um, so it really just kind of transports the viewer, and that's what we always want to do when we are um, creating images or using and choosing images to accompany our blogs, to go on our social media posts, to be in our banner photos, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whenever we are using images and we should always be looking to use images. The only times that we shouldn't be using images is when we're using videos. So, and even then we need a good thumbnail image. So we always <laughs> need images in our social media content and we always want our images to resonate. Um, another way is that, as we said, it helps people remember our our brand and keeps our brand top of mind another way is for example if you are a dentist and you you know you can tell people that you're a dentist you can have some information written somewhere about what your services are but if you have images and photos of people with 
great smiles, you know, in your office, that will really stand out with somebody. And mm -hmm. the next time they look in their mirror and look at their smile, they can say, wow, you know what? I remember seeing that, that, that mm -hmm. image of smiling faces at that dentist office. Maybe I should go there, or maybe I want to get my teeth checked out, or maybe I want, or I want to get braces or orthodontics. You know, so it really can carry with the viewer and the audience when it's out of their mind. You can take that with them and take the image with them. So that's something that we're always trying to do. And another great element of photos and images in our marketing materials, what we love about it is that it provides context. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are creating a story and we can write, but it may not be able to translate as well what we're trying to evoke or what we're trying to explain. Mm -hmm. But as we said, a picture is worth a thousand words. And this picture that we use, if we choose the right picture, it can really add context to what we're talking about and add meaning and further explain and go deeper in depth into sharing and explain what we're trying to explain when we're trying to tap into our network. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're visual people. There's a lot of times where mm -hmm. a picture can say the same thing that a paragraph would mm -hmm. say, if I can do that. I mean, it's literally what it's saying is mm -hmm. worth a thousand words. And so that context, I think, is so important. And I think it's important to make sure that when you're posting things and you're putting them out there, your picture better match what you're trying to say. I've seen plenty of blog posts that go up by, you know, whoever. Mm -hmm. and. The image at the top, that they, the featured image they chose, is like completely nothing to do with what the blog is about. And I'm like, how did you pick that? Where did that come from? So that's that's funny you say that because I was actually going to bring up like quite the opposite of that. Okay. Because at Cato BSM, like we write blogs almost every single day. every single day, every day. And so week, if we were to pick an image that 100% matches what we're talking about, we would have so many people on their phones. <laughs> and on their computers and sitting on their desks, but that's not what we want people to think about when they're reading our blogs. It's, it's really, if we're gonna be talking about um, evoking images in your social media, we could have easily put up a post of social media, but what is much better is if you really pick a heartfelt image that is of someone that, that draws that attention in. And so right. the, the blog post that we, uh, that I spoke about doesn't have a photo of a cover photo. No, it has photos of donuts because I yeah. want to let you the know that we're going to talk about donuts in this blog and I'm going to be able to tie it back in some shape or form. Yeah. Um, but it's something that immediately grabs your attention and then lures you in to, um, to learn more. You know, what happened in that story? Why are there donuts in this photo? And so it, right. Um, right. It's, it's interesting how much an image can have an impact mm -hmm. on what you choose to click on and what you choose to read. I agree. Yes, I, I think agree. that's a great word that you use, the impact. Images are so impactful mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we are choosing the appropriate images and the right images that resonate with our audience in all of our marketing materials. As we said, blogs, your blog should have an image attached, a featured image as well, so that when somebody sees it, it gives more meaning and it adds richness to the story that they are reading. So that's one place you want to make sure you're always using an image, our cover photos, our banner photos, your social media posts. People stop and look more when there's an image attached. Mm -hmm. If you want to have that person scroll past, then don't use an image. But if you want them to stop <laughs> and see and read and be intrigued by what you're telling them or sharing with them, then use an image and use a captivating image. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I, use, I like to always recommend whenever possible, if you have the resources on deck, always create your own images with your own original content. If you have a photo, even if, especially with social media, if you're doing social media posts, it's okay if they aren't 100% polished or um, high production value. That resonates, that's more relatable on social media. So mm -hmm. if you have a camera, your iPhone, a lot of us have you know, mobile devices that have great phones nowadays yeah. that rival DSLRs. So we can you know, take a photo, take a quick little picture to help add some context to our marketing materials. So I would always advocate whenever possible to do original content. If you have a little setup, a little light box set up in your house, in your corner of your room or in your office, you know, mm -hmm. um, snap a photo whenever possible if it's relevant. But if you don't have those resources on hand, you know, try to get the least stocky looking photo that you can find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some really great resources out there to get free stock photos. Yes. And, um, that aren't stocky looking. So um, <laughs> right. look as stock like, yeah. Exactly. And there's also the ability to also ask uh, people who posted really awesome photos, mm -hmm. maybe even user-generated content mm -hmm. that they're already using your product or 
um, a client might have actually spoken about you on social media, just shoot them a message and ask if you can use their photo. Yeah, no, no can harm. Be a win-win, you know. Yeah. They get and exposure then, and you get a great photo for your piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something that as soon as you were talking, it just like it live it like brought my attention to it is the fact that like at this agency we have DSLRs in the back. Like yeah. we all like have the ability to take really beautiful photos, but our brand is a little bit more raw and I guess since like 10 years ago like we've always been taking selfies mm -hmm. and so even though we have the tools and the resources to um, make beautiful high quality photos for our Instagram that's not who we are no. and so it doesn't really matter too much if your image is like high quality or not like it sometimes it's just it's what your culture is like and yeah. what, what the photos will be because that's who you are yeah. so take pride in that. And again, like you said, most of us have really nice phones that'll take a really good <laughs> picture. It yes. doesn't have to be, you know, the fancy camera every single time. Mm -hmm. This was filmed on a phone too. I mean, yeah, we're on a phone right now. So <laughs> see, you can even go live and uh, on Facebook and, and it's good content. Yes. Cool. Well, that wraps it up for my segment. <laughs> Very cool. Well, that was really fun because I, I love talking about imagery because I'm part of video. That's what I do and I love it. Um, and all of this can be applied across social media, any of your channels and uh, your websites too. Uh, that's something we like to advocate for too, is if you can have yourself in your website, if that's the brand that you want to go for, sometimes it's not, we love to see that. I think it's, it's very compelling. Mm -hmm. Photos are compelling, I think is what we're getting to, including cover photos. All right, so thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if you have questions, you want more ideas, you can go ahead and leave a comment below, or you can email us at tips at kwsmdigital.com. We will get back to you. Um, another thing that's coming up, uh, speaking of video and photos, video day. We have video studio day happening here in the Orange County office. It is on the 14th and we are extremely limited on what we have left. If you want to show up and you've never done video before, this is a really foolproof way to do it. We will interview you or you can read off of a teleprompter. It's, you're going to get four uh, 30 to 45 second videos. They are branded to you. We don't, and we edit them for you, add some music behind it. It is like the crash course in starting with video. It really is, and it's really fun. Um, we have a really good time doing it. So if you are interested, you can sign up. Go to kwsmdigital.com backslash video dash day dash OC, or just go to our website, click under workshops. That's where you're gonna find it. And you can sign up right there online and I will see you there. Uh, so thanks again for joining us and we will see you next week at the same time.